Welcome to the Bronx Project Podcast. I am your host, Mirez. And I am your host, Earl Grey. I hated it that. You don't have to love it. This is the Bronx Project Podcast that I just finished saying. Yeah. Uh, we're recording this November 5th. You'll be getting it the 8th. Um, we'll see. Tell me whenever we feel like you guys get it. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Maybe Tell, not. Did Maybe you just I'm see just... me watch? Did you just watch me try to take a sip of this open no, beer? No, I didn't. But I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to see that. I've uh, done that so many times at work where I have a water bottle and yeah. I'm like trying to like listen to other people talk and I'm like uh huh uh-huh. and they look at <laughs> me try to drink. You look mad nosy because it's, it's obvious at that uh-huh, point. Uh huh. And yeah. try to drink water with a cap on. Uh, <sighs> so yeah, welcome back, guys. This beer, uh, this beers, this week's beer of the week. <laughs> As you guys know, every week we have a different beer. Try to put you guys onto some new shit. Yeah. Uh, try to put ourselves onto some new shit. Sometimes we're lazy. We pick some shit we've already drank. Sometimes we just don't give a shit about what you think, and we just drink what we want. This week's beer of the week is Red Stripe. Because we wanted it. It's a, it's a Jamaican beer. Josh and I have had it before. It's, uh-huh. a, it's a very good Jamaican beer. Uh, the taste is awfully familiar. It's very lagerish. Yeah. Uh, it's light. It's not a light beer. It's just very light tasting. Yeah. It's smooth to the touch. It caresses your tongue in places you want to be touched. In uh, places in your tongue? Yes, in your mouth. You want to be touched? In your mouth. In, your, in my mouth. I don't want to be touched not in your my mouth. mouth at all. It's good. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll pretend Josh didn't say any of that. It's like yeah, you no, want to stick your dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small hole. Small hole. You dude. just got to just cram it in there, man. Cram I it. It's going to have to be real soft. Sorry, guys. I'm really sick right now. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the cold or the flu. It's one of those. It's, uh, what are you feeling? Describe your feelings to us. Sick. <laughs> get, get into a little uh, bit more detail than cold. that. Cold. Uh, I'm coughing a lot. I'm trying my best not to cough my voice sounds kind of weird but maybe it's sensual i don't know maybe you guys like it you're gonna gonna keep it (laughs) you're gonna keep the sickness yeah i love it it makes me sound better yeah so red stripe uh Um, we've been doing this we've been doing this 10 weeks where would you place it do you even remember the 10 beers we've done uh half of them i don't want to (laughs) remember because half of them were like pumpkin Pumpkin, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was that Dykeman Brew beer, which I fucked with. It was just mad foamy. Yeah, they gotta, <clears throat> they gotta deal with their foam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love these. No, but you ain't answered my question not once. What? <laughs> <laughs> where on the like? Where do you place the beer? Oh, like usually on my hand. Suck you, fuck you, bro. Like <laughs> one to ten, like you know what I'm asking you here. Oh, like a good, a solid five. Yeah? Yeah, it's like, I don't, not my go-to beer, honestly. Yeah. And it's not like, if I see it, I'm going to drink it. Like, if I go to a party and my friend's like, hey, we only have Red Stripes, I'm not going to be like, ah, man. No, I'm going to be like, oh, cool, man. But if they have Red Stripes and other beer, you're going to look at the other beer before you decide on Red Stripe. Yeah, because I know what Red Stripe tastes, and I'm curious about the other beer. Okay. Even though the other beer most likely is just a Corona. Or Heineken. Or Heineken. Or Budweiser. Throw some Odellos in there. Yeah, probably. Right. If you, if they're cool enough. So that's the question. If there's a Modelo, there's a Heineken, there's a Corona, a Red Stripe, and that's four, right? So let's round it out five for the Estella. Which one are you picking first? Well, I'm going to look around, see who's drinking what. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm going to look around Bro, who's no. drinking first. If I see a lot of people drinking the Red Stripes, I'm not going to pick the Red Stripes. Hipster. I'm just going to be that other guy who drinks the Modelo. But what do I have in your heart you want a Red Stripe? Like, you're just going to deny yourself what your heart wants? No, I'm going to get the Red Stripe if I want it. You just, you're, you're a liar then, because that's not what you just said. You don't know me. I know you I know you pretty well. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I've known you for like 14 years. Close. Pretty well. Close enough. No, I'm not going to pick the Red Stripe if everybody's drinking it. I'm like, nah. Unless there was only Red Stripes. That's what I'm trying to say is that if there was only Red Stripes at a place. You're grabbing I, it, but if I'm going to grab it. I'm yeah. not going to complain about it. You basically, like, you're not answering my question at all. So I'll answer my question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So if there's five beers, I'm going for the Modelo first. 
I'm okay. going for the Heineken second. That's what you wanted. I'm going for the Red Stripe third. I'm all fucked up. I'm going for the Corona last, actually. Stella fourth. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I think I'm going to go for the Corona last. I'm tired of Coronas. Yeah, no. I'm that's tired of them. I, it's, every time I go to like a barbecue or a party, it's always a Corona. It's always a Corona. And also, we're Hispanic. So, motherfuckers love Coronas, bro. Nah, a lot of white people like Coronas too, man. Yeah? Corona's just that beer that you grab. Nah, but like, I feel like, okay, I can only speak from my experience as a Dominican man. Dominican man. And as a Dominican man. man Dominican man. man. Uh, as Dominican man. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, a cough, not, not laugh. <laughs> always Coronas, always Coronas are Heineken's. You got some Presidentes, but like... Honestly, the president is that we get not here. Not one party I've been to were a president. Yeah, because the, the, the president is that you guys have here. You guys, as an I, as if I don't live here, also. Yeah, I'm like so. Okay, the Dominicans that you Americans yeah, get you here, they, they don't taste there, right? the same. They don't taste. The, yeah, I was born here. Yeah, exactly. I just you know like I feel I feel you a special feel connection. Home. It's a home. We're the hardest. No, but uh, yeah. yeah so ahead. the the a lot of Dominicans don't usually drink pre- presidentes here. But in DR, yeah, that's the, that's they the actually, shit, obviously. Yeah. Dominicans' go-to beer is a Heineken. It's because... No, it's Corona. He, well, in my, family, in my family, it's Corona, bro. Man, every Dominican I ever knew... My father's obsessed with, with Heineken. Yeah, yeah. My, my father loves Heineken. Something about that green color. Yeah. They just love it. It also smells like weed, and my dad's a pothead, so... Okay. So does... Corona don't smell like weed. Oh... No, Heineken's, uh, like, you sniffed the top of... Uh, I mean, I feel like those cheap, kind of, like, go-to beers always smell, smell like, like weed. weed. Do they throw some, so throw some weed? No, it's just hops are uh, a cannabis. Yeah. 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 You brew. You just brew it. That's I, it. I you probably it. brew weed, and you can make a beer out of it. We'll find out one day. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure they've done it. I gotta do my research. I'm not so sure about it, but I'm pretty sure you could brew it. <laughs> What? Oh, oh, like you're <laughs> drinking it? You're not smoking? Yeah. No, I mean obviously you're gonna be drinking it. They got like fucking. <sighs> I recently found they got wine that you could drink and get high. Yeah, that's the type of shit I need to be on. Yeah, man. To make make well, these podcasts a little more exciting. Talking, talking about <laughs> marijuana, <clears throat> something I'm not too familiar with. Uh, Josh doesn't smoke. Nah, nor did I eat it. Uh. California just legalized marijuana. Recreational? Recreational. Yeah? Yeah, man. When, I didn't they see that, tre- actually. Yeah, they, it's a big thing this week. Uh, big thing. All of California legalized it recreationally, but they're treating it like alcohol where you have to be 21 and older. I mean, that's I think that's been the case for, for every state that's legalized it so far. Well, they, that's it. That's nice. It's big news. The thing, the thing with uh, California, though, is that... It was always it was always legal medically. Yeah, and it was so easy apparently to get a medical card. Yeah, you just have like you just have back pain that or like leg pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get one. Or you could just be like, oh, I have anxiety. Yeah, true. I get, I get headaches. I have trouble sleeping. Anything yeah. really. Like, I get scared the, on airplanes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, any of that, and they would have given you a card. And so it was basically legal in California. And they're like, you know what? Why don't we just tax it? Yeah. So. Now they're looking at six billion dollars per year. Oh, just because they legalize oh, it's California. It. Yeah. yeah, six billion dollars per year they're gaining from the profits from taxes. So I don't know what New York is doing, but hurry that shit up yeah. if you want to make more money. Legalize marijuana. I honestly, I see, I see New York having legalized marijuana by 2018. Ooh, by 2018, like like uh, third quarter, fourth quarter, 2018. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's technically legal if you don't get caught New York, with it. New York, uh, yeah, they already decriminalized it. Yeah, they, New it's York just is a not ignoring now. those dollars. They're not ignoring those dollars. Yeah, you you got a ticket. Yeah, you, you got a ticket if you get yeah. if you get caught smoking it because yeah. they can't frisk you anymore. But if they catch you with it in your hand, it's a uh, it's it's up to the cops' discretion actually. Because yeah. uh, from my understanding, they can arrest you if they if they feel like arresting a suspicion, you. Suspicion, yeah. No, no, they just feel like being dicks. They just feel like being cops that one day. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you, you say being cops, but being dicks, they're the same thing. Kind of. Yeah. Being pigs. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, if, it's up to them whether they give you a ticket, give you a summons, actually take you in. Yeah. Just take your blunt and smoke it in front of you. Like, it's up to them. Yeah, but I heard that if you smoke it at indoors. If I were a cop, that's what I would do. <laughs> just arrest everybody? Nah, just take people's blunts and just smoke them in front of them. <laughs> that, that's like me as a, I smoke, right? So I, that's what would offend me the most. Like, like I got to tell that story afterwards. And saying yeah. that it's wrong and just... Nah, they. <laughs> you know you can't do this, right? You know you can't. It's good shit, man. But you can't do this. Where did you get this from? Yeah, like finding out that you got your dealer's information and all that <laughs> shit. You smoke my blunt, and I can't even say anything. I'm tight. If I had to spend a couple hours in in a fucking in a bookings cell, done that before. Yeah, we've fine. explained that. Yeah, give me give me a couple give me a couple hours. I'll be fine. You give me a. A ticket? I'll pay it, but I'm going to be high. Like, because you don't smoke, right? I When you smoke, like, you don't care about anything after. Like, when you high? Oh. Uh, it's, you're so carefree when you high. You're just like, man. It's a, it's the reason why a lot of people smoke, right? So, I feel like if they gave me a ticket, and this, let's say it's a $100 ticket, I'm going to be tight, but then I'm going to keep smoking my blunt, and I'm going to be like, I'll deal with that one. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> Fuck it, man. That's fuck it, just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking stupid, man. But if you smoke my blunt right in front of me, bro, your high is now immediately I'm gone. Now I'm stressed the fuck out because I'm like, all right, I just got disrespected, and I can't get over the fact that I just got disrespected because I'm like, you just stole my shit. <laughs> and then at the same time, it's like. Bro, you're like wasting my shit. <laughs> <laughs> you could have asked, we could have shared. Do you think do you think a lot of cops smoke weed? Yeah, off duty. Yeah? Dude, uh, weed is so like universal. Like almost everybody does it that the fact that police still stop people because of marijuana is fucking crazy. I know cops uh for like people who grew up in my neighborhood and shit yeah. who became cops. Yeah, same. Who still like chill in the in the like they just chill like regular yeah like after like after they they off duty, you see them playing dice in the streets and shit. Yeah, I mean they're off duty, not working anymore. It's like, are you gonna talk about cupcakes after you're done working? Yeah, but it's weird because like when you got the uniform on, you're gonna be a dick. Yeah, and, and break them up like, oh, you can't do that out here. But then you take the uniform off, be like, yo, look, pass them dice my way. What if you're still wearing the uniform and you're off duty? Like you're just walking home and you forgot to change. I don't know. I don't like cops, basically. <laughs> no I really does. don't. No one does. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Is that you can't even say that because apparently a lot of people love cops. Apparently. I mean, I grew up in a society where everyone just hated cops. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You and I, like, Hispanics are really distrustful of cops. Can't trust Or, like, them. I won't say that that's true because I actually know a lot of Hispanics who, like, love cops. I don't know. I guess it depends on, on how you're raised. I mean, I have a few friends who became cops. Yeah? Like, I went to high school with them, and I was actually pretty close with them. And they recently turned into police officers. I'm going to watch what I say around you from now on. No, I don't I don't really talk to them that much, but if I talk to them, and I'm like, hey, bro, you got a connection for That's weed. That's exactly what a narc and they're, would say. And they're like, yeah, man, I got one. I'm sure I'm sure every cop knows someone who's... Also, weed. if they're... Let's say if they're uh, they're undercover... And you were like, if you ask them if they're a cop, they have to say yes. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You can't lie about that. Like, if I came to you, you're a cop, but you're off duty. Who the fuck you calling the cop? I'm just saying, if you're a cop. Nah, don't point your fingers at me with that accusation. You had your hand right at me. No, like, you a cop. <laughs> like, now you pointing at God? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. God's the great cop. <laughs> He's the Trying to judge me with your laws. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gonna put your them, laws on me? You gonna send me to me. hell? He's I like, gotta do twenty five to the life in hell? Nah, you're gonna do twenty five and forever in fucking hell with Satan. Oh damn! <laughs> but he got weed. It's okay. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> if there's weed in hell, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even stressed out. No, like, he's just gonna just smoke that. Every day. Whatever. Like, if if the devil was like fucking. Ass raping you, cause it's hell. Like he's not. It's what not fun. About ass raping, bro. Yeah. It's not like what the fuck you think happens in hell. Like you just I watch. Don't know about ass you raping. watch curb your enthusiasm. I don't like, know. Like you marathon fucking 
The Vampire Diaries? Yeah. No. Oh, oh, why is that the first thing that pops up? I fuck with the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> like you're not gonna, you're not about to question me. Like, you know I like the Vampire Diaries. Man, if Rick and Morty was just streaming I fuck down with that show, yeah, like, no, no, but you're not gonna, seasons. you're not gonna stream Rick and Morty in heaven. I mean hell. You gonna stream Rick and Rick and Morty in heaven? You think so? That's a fun show. Like, yeah, I, but you think like Rick and Morty, the show is in heaven. You think God would approve of Rick and Morty? I really think I really think God's mad chill, bro. He's, I think I think that like a lot of white men wrote the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. So they made God like a hard ass. But I really feel like God be smoking blunts in heaven. Like when they were writing, like King James, not like not to get confused with King LeBron James. But King James, the guy who wrote the actual Bible. Are you tell me LeBron James didn't write King James he could have, you know. He probably has his own verse. Uh, anyways, while he was writing it, God's like, yo, that's not chill. Like, oh, man. <laughs> chill. Why do you think I have a beard? I never said that shit. Yeah. I never said any like of that. Like, everybody that comes to heaven, yeah. and they're like, you know what? The first thing, he just apologizes. He's like, guys, I'm sorry that you had to believe those white men for telling you that you were wrong for masturbating. I'm all right with it. Come on. I feel I, like God's not your like call, you gonna see, too. You don't see God with the, with the red <laughs> eyes? He's going to be like, the fuck was that? Homosexuality is a sin shit. Some of my best friends are gay, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I experimented once or twice. Come on. In college. Yeah. In when, God- I was le- <laughs> when I was learning this God shit. Yeah, exactly. What do you think I majored in? What do you Fucking think? awesome. That's <laughs> where I majored in. I would love God if you God was like that. I think he is, man. I think he is. What if God was I think one of It also us. explains why like why God lets a lot, of, a lot of like, like bad shit happens, right? Like he just gets mad high and just <laughs> knocks out. Like just <laughs> knocks out a couple hurricanes happen, he wakes up, he's like, yo, bro. He's like, bro, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> Damn. The Twin Towers fucking collapse and shit. He wakes up. He's like, oh, shit. shit. That's Who right. Who didn't wake me up? Who didn't wake me up? <laughs> That's right. I was supposed to do that. Michael. He looks at his phone. <laughs> and he's like, my bad. He my alarm like was off. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> my alarm was off, bro. I'm sorry. Damn, that's a Twin Towers 9-11 joke we did there. Do you think? I mean, well, we're I'm from not, New York. We're I'm from New York. I'm not apologizing. We're I experienced that we're shit. We're allowed to. That's scary. Right? Yeah, I think I was there. Nine eleven. I wasn't there. Two thousand one. Yo, third grade. Where were you in 9/11? third grade? In class, third yeah. grade, and my dad had to pick me up. I was in. I was in the fourth grade. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, we we <laughs> we hid under the tables for like a good. Really, you did that two old minutes. school yeah. like Soviet uh, shit. Yeah, a hot two minutes. Then we ran down, like book. We everybody booked it downstairs. I can't remember if my mom picked me up or not. I think she did, though. Then we went to my my cousin's middle school, picked her up. Yeah. And I remember just being so fucking... Bo- I was nine years old during 9-11. Same. Just being so fucking bored. Because they were playing the news on every channel, like on... Mm-hmm. Cartoon Network, it was the news. Disney every channel, channel, it was the news. Every channel they were showing, 9-11. Yeah, that shit was stressing me the fuck out, bro. Like, Eight that to was, nine-year-old child. Yeah, like, what the that fuck, That shit to bro? me was a buzzkill. That shit, like, I'm not even joking. Because <laughs> I, I feel like everyone wants to pretend like, oh my God, it was 9-11. I was so worried. Like, I really didn't care too much about 9-11, honestly. Really? I was just tight that I was missing Phil the Future. <laughs> Phil the Future. Yeah, I was like, yo, it was a new episode tonight. Yeah, fucking with me. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I was so fucking scared. That the day. tower's already gone. Nah, man, they didn't even fall the second one yet. It was so scary. I remember. But so you mm-hmm. like you felt it? Hell yeah, because everybody in my household was so paranoid. Like it was crazy. My dad picked me up from school. I remember we were like mid session, mid class. Yeah, my yeah, teacher yeah. was just teaching, and she was like, she had to walk out. And all the kids were just, like, doing work and shit. Mm-hmm. The teacher came in. All right, we're dismissing everybody. Something happened in downtown Manhattan. We're going to just dismiss you. Your parents are going to pick you oh, up. Oh, so they explained it to you? Yeah. And I'm like, all right. Well, I don't know what's going on. And then my dad picks me up. My dad was like, yo, Twin Towers. Someone hit them. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, look over there. And 
down, like if you look down Tremont, where I used to live in yeah. Fortuna, down towards Tremont, you can literally see smoke, smoke right. in the sky. It was crazy. And I went upstairs to the apartment, and we're all day watching the news, bumming me out like crazy. My grandma being hysterical, my dad also being equally hysterical, my uncle talking about war and defending his planet. I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. No one cares about you. <laughs> and just everybody just like, adios mio, adios right, mio. Right. Like fucking scared. And I'm like, now I'm scared. You know, I was I now was scared. Now I'm scared as hell. I was scared to to some degree. Because like you pick up, as a kid, you pick up off uh, the emotions that, that the people around you feel. I yeah. feel really easily, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I felt, I felt like my mom was freaking out. My dad, I can't even remember if he was in the house or not, honestly, which is basically the case for most of my life. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember point, dad. At any point in time, like, yo, was your dad there for that? I mean, he could have been. Fucking no. <laughs> he could have been. Daddy wasn't there most of the time. Is that so, uh, Austin Powers? Daddy wasn't there. To take me to, to the fair. fair. To, to change, change my, my underwear. underwear. <laughs> daddy <laughs> wasn't there. Yeah, that, that's a... Uh, that's Austin oh, Powers. A gold member for those of you uh, who don't know. The last movie. Yeah, Beyonce's in that. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. What was her name? Uh, uh, Foxy Cleopatra. Yeah, or Foxy like Cleopatra. And I'm, I'm a, a whole lot, lot of women. women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that just came to me. I'm glad. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Groove it, baby. You're Foxy. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed something. What did you notice? <laughs> we need more friends. Yeah? Why is that? Uh, I, I, I was just going through uh, Instagram, seeing everyone's story, and everybody's just having a good time. <laughs> like, you, with their friends. We're having a good time. We are. We're, we're just recording, recording this. But it's, it's fucking Sunday, bro. Sunday, who the fuck, who does much on Sundays? Really? I'm just saying, like, in general, we lack friends. Yeah? I don't, I'm not complaining about it, but I'm tired of seeing people have fun. With their friends going out, having a beer, no. I don't know. I. I think my problem is because people hit me up, bro. Like yeah. I'm not like not to I'm not bragging about it or anything, but like people hit me up like, hey man, what you doing today? You want to hang out? I'm just such a like introvert. Yeah, yeah. Same. I mean, that's why I, I go don't to hang work either. I, I, I go to work. I go to the gym, I come home, rub one out, and then I watch basketball. Like, that's my life. Like, rub one out. You know, it's not that... Sometimes I rub one out with a blunt in my mouth. Like It doesn't sound that bad, though. Honestly, bro, it's kind of chill. Like, you ever... I mean, you, you don't smoke. So, but like, it's, if you ever do, if you ever... There was this one time where I had hardcore medication because my leg... With the time that, you saw the dragon? And I saw a huge dragon. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, how would it feel to just rub one out right now? It's not the same. Okay, so... <laughs> it's never, you've never, you've well, never it took forever. I know, but you've, never, you've never smoked weed. So, but the, 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 the feeling of, of taking... Fuck, don't tell me what you took. It's ambient. Fuck, Josh... I just said, don't tell me what you I took, to. man. You look, you're going to take forever on this No, I, I, it was in the tip of my tongue. Well, no longer. Because I told man. you. You could have clipped out the, the time where I was thinking. No. no. Too much editing. Fuck, <laughs> man. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, you took the amb- Nothing like smoking weed. Nothing like smoking weed. Um, I bet because not that ambient I, is fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, man, just jerking off while high. Try it, guys. Try. It. <laughs> I feel like half the population has. Uh, weird, cause like we, uh, you and I, we spoke about what our next segment is gonna be during the commercial break. Mm-hmm. So maybe talking about jerking off right now isn't the best thing. Oh yeah, you're right. Ooh, <laughs> that's bad. But, <laughs> <laughs> but. Kevin Spacey. Oh God! Uh, yeah, two maybe two weeks ago, it, it came out that Kevin Spacey is uh, is a child molester. Is a child alleged? Molest- child no, no, no. Molester. He no, he he owned up to it. Oh, he did. He owned up to it. I thought uh, that he said that to that one person. 
uh, he, the he apologized. Yeah, he apologized. Apologized. And he didn't remember, it, but he said that, "Hey, if I did do anything, it was very wrong, drunk behavior, and I'm very much sorry, and all that." And I remember reading that. I don't remember him owning up and saying, like, admitting to, like, "Oh yeah, I remember that." Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I know there was another another uh, guy who was 18 years old where he did the same thing to. The wrong thing about this, you know, it's not wrong about owning up. You Owning up to what your mistakes are, that's a good thing. But owning up to it and then like, well, it was at then very bad drunk behavior. And if I did do that to you, well, I'm sorry about it. But I guess this is a great time to uh, take advantage of the spotlight and say, well, I'm gay now. Um, And I want to live my life as a gay man. To me, uh, what he said was uh, that he feels maybe drunkenly he may have done it Mm -hmm. and he regrets it, uh, which is 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 then it's not fine. Obviously. No, it's not fine at all. But um, it's like it's an acceptable I, excuse. Yeah, I accept that. No, it's not. It's not an acceptable excuse. I accept that. Yeah, I accept saying, "Hey, I, I, I was drunk," because you know a lot of people don't say it, but people do stupid shit when you're drunk. All obviously, the time. Uh, and obviously, we're uh, this. This is something that happened twenty plus years ago. Um. Obviously, now we're we're a lot more fluid. With with what our definition of consent is, yes, uh, I w- actually I won't even say that because the guy was fourteen years old. You still should fucking watch that. It's still disgusting, right? This is why a lot of people are saying that his excuse is not an excuse. Yeah, it's not an excuse it, and because it was a fourteen year old boy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the thing that makes it even less of an excuse, really, is following that up with saying, "Hey, it's all good." I'm gay. You know, like, that's... Like, that's fucking wild, bro. <laughs> like, you're saying... No, yeah. I, I saw it as crazy, too. I'm like, all right, so you choose this moment to come out of the closet to, like, kind of, like, counteract what you did. Right, and right. You, to think that people are going to be like, oh... oh okay, that makes sense that, that he makes would touch a 14-year-old now. boy. Oh, He's gay. Congratulations, you're gay now. No, that's not an excuse... To be a child molester. Yeah, correct. Not and at that's all. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, yes, do I do I appreciate him admitting that what he did was wrong? Yes. Yeah. Does that change anything? No. No. Because what the 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 uh, the outcome is still you molested a 14 year old boy. He did. The and outcome is still. I the thing is he didn't molest the molest like he didn't touch him. He tried. He tried, and the boy was like, nah, nah. He attempted to molest uh, a child. He didn't. I think there was another child that came out saying that when he was 18, that Kevin Spacey tried again. So now there's a... There's a growing list, right? There's a history. So my my question to you is, where does that list end? Uh, And how how many people, let's say, more people come out... When, when is it okay to say, all right, he's a he's a a child molester? Because if you're saying uh, he's not technically a molester because he didn't actually do it, technically you're right. But it's like attempted murder, right? Like he attempted to molest. He attempted, him. but he just didn't succeed. With yeah, it. yeah. Which is why it's not okay. Which is also why it's not okay to use that as your excuse, as in, well, I'm gay now. To kind of like right. counteract what you just were and accused of. Essentially, that is what he said because he was like, "Oh, uh, uh, people may know this about me, but I've I've entertained sexual relationships with both men and women. Yeah, and I now past, choose to live my life like, as a gay, as a gay man. man. Yes, I you know because you said that I keep I kept my life as a secret for so long, and everyone knows that I've." You know, and so done boys. So and what's girls. he saying? Like, what's he saying? Is he saying that uh, uh, because of the frustration of 
having to to live in the closet that he just so happened to touch boys. No, he's just trying to say, well, guys, I'm trying to figure out what the secret, transition. The, well, the his, transition comes. It is not a good one. I'm telling you, it's not a good one. It's not like well, this leads to that. He's trying to like, kind of like. Fade that away, but that's what it seems to me. It seems like he's saying, "Well, he's you like, guys well, know, <laughs> I I like guys, and I couldn't be open about it, so I started touching little boys." Kind of. That's kind of to me. It sounds like, like the way like, he, do you guys, the do way you guys he worded it? it, the way he came about it, the way he came about it so abruptly, seemed like that, which is why people are going like crazy. Which is like, oh well, being gay is not an excuse to touch little boys. Yeah. And that's his own fault. He chose the wrong time to come out. Honestly, you you should have just said he should have just said his piece. He should have just said sorry. I was drunk. It was bad drunk behavior, and I'm sorry about what and don't I could have done. Get me wrong. Done. His career would have been done regardless. He, yeah, he's gone. Uh, I mean, he's he's, he's had a, a he's great a, career a, a as older, it was, but he's an older white man, and older white men are no longer allowed. We we getting out the fuck out of here. Oh well, we, we are getting finding out everything the fuck you can out of here. Like y'all, y'all better be on your best behavior. You see what Harvey Weinstein fucking molested, raped, and and uh, belittled women for for decades. And we got him the fuck out of here. And now he is paying for his sins. So listen, don't get me wrong. I I think Kevin Spacey, the moment we found out he was touching boys, he was going to be the fuck out of here. I think that it spoke a lot about his <laughs> character that he used that situation to to kind of make a scapegoat out of himself. Yeah. And that's what exactly. I think that's, he used, that's, that says a lot about his character. He used his sexuality as yeah, a Yeah, I think that says a lot about his character. Where it's like, oh... No, it's fine. It's fine. I, I'm gay. It's fine. You know, like yeah, no, it's not. No, that's it's not, not fine to use this moment as your coming out, uh, your coming out uh, speech, and at the same time, it's not okay to touch little boys or attempt to touch little boys or <laughs> allegedly touch little boys. You know, it's kids, it's, kids, just yeah. kids in general, kids just... in general. That's Little boys, sick. as we as I, uh, the, the record shows, was having a conversation with with a uh, with a old coworker, where he wasn't necessarily he wasn't defending Kevin Spacey. He was like, "Oh, that I, this shit that I I fucking hate when people do this, where they're like playing devil's advocate, like they're trying to like uh, stand up for the for the wrong person in quote unquote the interest of creating conversation, right? So the the thing is, oh. Back in the day, people used to fuck 14-year-olds all the time. Go ahead. No, that's, that's, basically, it. that's <laughs> basically it. Like, oh, like, that was the argument. Like, oh, um, women would be married. Girls would be married, really, at the age of, like, 14, whenever they started menstruating. Uh, same with men. Men were shipped off to war at 14. And the argument that he was making was that it isn't up until recently. Which, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of a predatory argument to make. Yeah. And I'm going to have a conversation with you afterwards, bro, if you listen to this, because that's kind of sick. Um, no, man. No. That's... It's not okay. It's never disgusting. been okay. It's, no, I mean, like, it technically was historically okay at a point. But even then, like... That to me, I don't I just can't see it. I just morally see it. wrong. Yeah, just morally. Morally wrong. wrong. Yeah. Like times have changed, and people are now woke, and we know what's right and wrong, in the moral standards. And you and I can agree that trying to touch a fourteen-year-old boy when you're an adult, even if it's you're sick, it's terrible. It's sick. It's nasty. Disgusting. It's gross, and I hope this. I hope this uh, sheds a light to 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 you, young and older parents out there, whoever's listening, that y- your 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 sons can be can be touched as well. Like it's it's yeah, it's a not sick only your world. daughters. It's a uh, and yeah, and that's that, that's the yeah. point that I was trying to lead to. Um, yes, women are assaulted at a much more at a much higher, much more alarming yeah, crazy, rate. Right? Yeah, yeah, but. And I will say protect your daughters, please. Uh, your your aunts, your cousins, just a random girl you see on the street. If you see something, just please just be mindful because there's a lot of no, fucking I... perverse people out there. But also know 
that there are people who who will touch on little boys. There, like that that happens and it happens often. No, it is. Um, high- and it goes and it goes under the radar because uh, men are expected to be sexual by nature. Yeah, and it isn't just Kevin Spacey's. It's like your son's English teacher with the big titties. Like she might she might be touching on your son, and mm-hmm. he might be like. Like shook, but doesn't even know what to say about it. Cause like, who who does he go to? Uh, anybody who he goes to is just gonna look at him like, oh shit, that's dope, bro. Um, honestly, if my English teacher, who was a female, yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, bro. <laughs> this is another subject to talk about. Well, bro, I was yeah. I was eighteen year old boy. That's the thing is that you can't. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but that isn't always the case. Exactly, that isn't always the case. Um. And even if it is the case, even if that, even if you, let's say you as a 14, 16, 18 year old boy, not 18 because 18 year legal, I guess, but as a young man, even if you're down, it is still predatory behavior from the, from your teacher. Exactly. Honestly, if you are a 14, 16, 18 year old boy or any type or girl or any type of person in ever in life. If someone is doing something to you and it's wrong, and you know it's wrong, you have the right to just come out and tell somebody when you feel like it's the right time. I just, I urge people to, uh... Like, don't keep it to yourself. Yeah. You know, find some comfort. Yeah. Find some comfort in telling somebody and expose that person. I, I, I urge people to... The, the problem is there... That you can't put too much pressure on the on the person who needs to come out, right? Because uh, how do I how do I phrase it? The problem therein lies that it's hard for you to come out when when the society that we live in is a victim blaming society. You know? Yeah. Where um, if a girl gets raped, it's what dress were you wearing? Um, what what message was you were you sending? Maybe you were telling him subconsciously that you wanted it. Mm-hmm. It looked to me like you wanted it, you know. Like that's the kind of society we yeah, live in. Yeah, but that's not and right the at kind all. Of, uh, where I, where a little boy could go up to someone and say, "Hey," uh, could go up to his friend and say, "Hey, the teacher touched me," and the response he's he's likely to get is, "What are you a faggot? You didn't enjoy it? She yeah. had a titties in your face." It's I like, f- uh, this is what I would do if yeah. I was you, you know, like. <laughs> but if you were that kid and you felt like it was wrong and you didn't yeah. like it, you didn't like it. But that's the know? problem is that we live in a society that <clears throat> tells you it's empty words, empty words. It's like, oh, kids are kids are the future. Kids are this, this, and that. But when a kid talks, we kind of just brush it aside. Yeah. When a kid says, "Hey, this makes me uncomfortable," we're like, "Well, you just do it anyway." Just uh, you know. Basically, we man, we dictate how kids are to behave, and then we get surprised when they don't feel comfortable coming to us with uh, with their problems and, and situations. Yeah. This is why I like being a millennial, because us millennials are woke as a society. Oh, we're we're, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there, we're getting but there. we're the start of that. I can't wait. I think uh, like our kids are gonna be so much smarter than us. Sixty years from now, I'm really excited for what the world will look like. Yeah. Um, I don't think I think we're a uh, hot take. I think having Donald Trump as a president might be what's best for us long term mm-hmm. because now we know not to do that. Yeah, again, you know what I mean. Like, like, like the whole thing that got Donald Trump uh, 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 to be president in the first place is low ver- low voter turnout, and people just were so confident that someone as ill suited to be president as Donald Trump would actually get the job. Well, now we know we could. Yeah. Now we know that he easily could if we don't do our part. Exactly. And now the next, I, I truly believe this, the next voter turnout is going to be intense. Like, it's going to be insane. Hell yeah, because everybody's going to be like, well, we don't We're want not that letting to that happen, happen again. again. We're not letting that, and we won't. I truly, in my heart, believe that we will not let this happen ever again. We make mistakes. But, but we learn from them. We, but learn, we learn from them. And that's the beauty of being a millennial. Yeah. And the beauty of the generation coming right after us and after them and after them is that we're the start of people knowing that we made mistakes 
and we learn from them. And knowing them. that we can be better from them. Yeah. And we can make better and we know what's best, you know? Because we're not afraid to make mistakes, yeah. you and I. Because we know that we that's just learning curves. Yeah. And that's the beauty of our nation. Are you saying that we are the staple of the millennial generation? Yes. You, you heard it here first. Yeah. The Bronx Project Podcast. Staple. Tell, tell everyone. I'm just saying, hey, we're doing this. We're speaking to the to a population of people. Yeah. So I mean, and they're listening to us. 100, 150 people. I mean, it's still a good number, better than like the five people we know. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> literally we have more people listening to this podcast than we know. Exactly, which is a great hey, thing. It's hey. just good. Exactly, yeah, it's a good right? fucking start. Ten episodes in. And we're already recruiting a fucking army. We're, yeah, 10, like the first episode, we had like five downloads. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, we didn't do anything right. Yeah. Now we got everything set. If you really think about it, if we have five downloads, and now we're at like, I don't even know how much we're at, but we're in the hundreds now. We're, we're up there, yeah. Our that, friends were downloading in the first episode, and now these random strange people. We up, we up like seventy five percent on y'all motherfuckers. Exactly. Hey, I don't a, want it, man. We exactly. changing the world. We changing so the we world. So we are, we are a voice for the millennials. Wait, we wait. are one of the voices. We will be. I like to say that we are a unity of voices. You're saying, you and you're I saying are one we are voice. now. Yeah. You're saying we are now. I feel like we're getting yeah, let's there. Get to, let's get to, to five digit downloads. And then, then we'll start talking like that. I feel like we're starting. We already have what it takes, you and I yeah. personally, what it takes to be that voice. We just need people. We just need people. And speaking of, the BX Project, that's T-H-E-B-X-P-R-O-J-E-C-T. Yep. And that's on Twitter. Uh-huh. That's on we don't got Tumblr, but fuck it, I'm about to make one right now. Yeah. Uh, that's on Instagram. It's on uh, Facebook. It's on SoundCloud and on Facebook. Yeah. Follow us, please. Share it with all your friends. Um, I'm going to make a Savannah account. So, comments. Uh, by the comments. time, listen, by the time this is out, we'll have a Savannah account. We'll have a Tumblr account. Uh-huh. I want you guys, uh, starting next week, the, the second... What is this? this? The first week of the month, right? Yeah, man. So the second week of every month, the Bronx Project podcast becomes an advice podcast. It's so, new to me, too. Yeah, I know. We've been talking about this, right? Yeah, but it's new to me, too. You, you've just... You just, I like, fleshed declared out the it. Idea. I fleshed out the idea live. Yeah, you just <laughs> declared it. Like, I declare advice week. Advice week. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the second week of the of the month. I could be the last week of the month. It doesn't matter. We're going to give it advice. Uh, we're going to basically, yes, please. Um, we're we're going to tr- we're going to try to make it as anonymous as possible. Also, the BX project at Gmail dot com. Please email us your questions, your uh, your worries. Is it the BX project? Yeah, it's the BX Project. I thought it was podcast. No, it's TBP Podcast. Yeah, pod- exactly. TBP Podcast. Wow, I'm a liar. Is it TBP Podcast? It's TBP Podcast yeah. at gmail.com. Exactly. Don't listen to That's Steven all the, the time. the Bronx now. Project. Checked. So TBP B-P Podcast, asked. all one word, uh-huh. at gmail.com. Gmail. Please email us uh, questions, relationship problems. Josh and I are really good with relationships. Josh will attack it from the... From the perspective of someone who's actually in a meaningful, long-lasting relationship, six I'll attack plus it. Years. I'll attack it from the from the standpoint of the single guy who is really good at giving relationship advice, but not so good at taking relationship. He's advice. good at relationships. It's just ah, the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming y'all. Fuck out of <laughs> exactly. here. Exactly. I'm blaming the girls. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dudes, just email us. Um, honestly, yeah. again, the Savannah will be up, so it'll be it'll be anonymous. Anything that's on your mind, honestly, if you wanna if you wanna shit on us, <laughs> we'll read them. <laughs> we will exactly. read them. I, I we haven't gotten as much hate as I thought we would. Yeah, I haven't gotten any. Hate I haven't yet. gotten any hate, so it stands at zero. So, <laughs> so we're like totally up on. Uh, and Josh YouTube. and I are convinced. Josh and I are convinced that until we start getting hate, we haven't arrived. Exactly. So send some hate. Honestly, send some love. Yeah, send I've some said hate. that so many times that. If we don't get any type of like criticism, hardcore criticism, or like someone saying that "fuck you," "I hate you," we haven't made it yet. 
Too much positiveness. Yeah. Like, be honest with us. We suck at certain points. Then you're you a know. fucking liar. You don't think that at all. Oh. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> 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 no. So what? I got the highest <laughs> expectations of this fucking podcast of this Bronx project experiment we're doing here. It's you know, an experiment. You know I what think. I was thinking about? Okay, so uh, I don't know if we've talked about this. Did I just um, finish this beer? Yeah, you, yeah. I finished both been, of them. You've been chugging. You got one more in there though. I got you. Um, I see you, baby. To fuck. What was I saying? <laughs> Oh, the Bronx Project, right? It comes from uh, the Manhattan Project. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, Nobody knows oh, that, really. Can I, can I say the story of how I, got, I, I think how we got the name? Lay it on me. Lay it on me. All right. Lay it on them. Damn, I forgot kind of. Lay it on me through them. <laughs> All right. So, I think we were sitting in your house, Lay it in on your on place, us. in your living room, and we we're talking about, yo, Steven, you got to make a mixtape or an EP. And I was like, dude, you know what would be a cool name for an EP? The Manhattan Project. And then you looked at me, and then another friend looked at me, and they're like, nah, man, that's good and all, but what about the Bronx Project? And in general, in the beginning, it was supposed to be Stevens or Mirrors' uh, EP or mixtape name. And it was supposed to be the most bomb-ass mixtape slash EP ever. It could still be. It could still be. We we have the rights to this. You can't do yeah. shit to us. But as time passed by, we talked about creating this podcast. And the name of it came from Steven. He sat down. He was like, bro, I really want to do this podcast. And I got a perfect name for it. And I'm like, lay it on me, man. And he's like, what about the Bronx Project? I'm like, the Bronx Project podcast? And he's like, it doesn't have to only be a podcast, but it's the Bronx Project. I'm like, I know where you're going at. I like this. Let's do it. This was a year ago. My my point, I say that to say that I truly believe, you know how we have, uh, we had a little, a little like uh, instrumental thing going on in, to introduce a podcast. Yeah. They got to be a bomb drop, bro. Because it's like the Manhattan Project, right? It's a <laughs> nuke. <laughs> Yeah, they gotta be a bomb, a bomb drop. I like how we're fleshing out these ideas <laughs> mid podcast. You know, the, transparency is the name of the game. Yeah. Uh, as I get an idea in my head, I want you guys to see how it comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. You know, like like we're very transparent. We're uh, everything we feel, everything we we f- want to do, we run it by you guys. And you guys, uh, uh luckily we have the the good fortune of. Having a really interactive fan base so far. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, like Steven's it's really, been giving me very it's good really, uh, it's feedback. It's really, it's really, it's really good that that like when we ask you guys questions, you genuinely give me answers, and I fucking love that shit. Like I imagine I was talking to myself, like, "Hey guys, what do you think about this?" I mean, when we started crickets, this, we would, crickets. yeah, we would think that we would just get crickets back. Yeah, we didn't but get we've no actually crickets. gotten like comments back, which is pretty good. Uh, also, to explain what the Manhattan Project is. To people who don't know what it is. Yeah, it's, honestly, if you don't know what the fucking Manhattan Project is, stop listening to this podcast. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, like, dude, that's history. History. Oh, but we got people from different countries. Yo, I be forgetting that. We gotta explain it. We gotta explain it. Explain Anyways, the, explain uh, the Manhattan, Manhattan Project, Project was a uh, project based in New York uh, where the United States recruited all of the most famous, all of the most wealthiest scientists in all of the world to create the first atomic bomb ever. We're talking about people like Einstein, and that's the only example I have. <laughs> <laughs> to come and then create this one crazy thing that can potentially change the world. And we're talking about the atomic bomb. So, this is during World War II, to give you backstory. This is during the Nazis and... This is also around the time where we did create the atomic bomb and used it on Japan, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 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 Get it? Because it's like butts. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's a project that every all these geniuses came together to Woo! change the world. 
And the Woo! Bronx Project, shut up. The Bronx Project consists of these two geniuses, Miris and Earl Grey, creating this one beautiful thing you to change I'm, the world. You think I'm a genius? I think I'm a genius. <laughs> no, but that's not what I asked. <laughs> Do you think I'm a genius? Yeah. Josh? Yes. Am I a genius? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever to uh, make you happy. No, you know what made me really happy, though? (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) The Knicks fucking won. We came down from 19 down. Really? Yeah, we won by seven, bro. What was I What was I doing? KP, new career high, 40 points, eight rebounds. You know who won the game for us? Oh. (laughs) Frank Nelikin. Wow. Look at that, Mr. Rookie. Oh, my God. He hit two clutch three-pointers. In 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 uh, yeah, what you were just talking about, he needs to work on his shoot game. Yeah, no, I'm saying t- he just needs to get hungrier, bro. He just needs to he just needs to stop. Like he needs to understand that he is he he is a part of this team, an important part of this team going forward. Like yeah, he's 19 right now, but the Knicks are investing a whole lot into this kid. He got to, like, stop being afraid, bro. Stop. You're a rookie. You. I feel you. And, and, and you're going to mess up. But then you're going to do things like this where, God motherfucking damn it. He got a career high 10 points, which is obviously not a lot. But maybe this inspires him to shoot more. Yeah, of course. He, he shot four for seven. And that was your little taste of the, the Knicks are now five and four, <laughs> motherfucker. There you go. And now we are up to our segment <coughs> of song, song of the song of the week. Yeah, songs of the week. I just want to say one more thing. Go ahead, man. KP is seven <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. This one, KP is seven three. He only has eight rebounds. And I know, yeah, sure, whatever. The Knicks, like. He plays in a style where, how do I, like, he's not, he's not near the rim a lot. He's a, he's a perimeter player. So I get that. But KP need to, he need to get his rebounds up. Uh, if you guys want to hear more sports, uh, we're going to have our sports segments be completely separate. No, fucking deal with it. All right, guys? You're going to listen to it here and now. No, we're going to have... We actually here have, and now. We actually Christos have Porzingis went 15 for 24 all right. from the field. Do you know what percentage that is? That's pretty good. I don't know, but no, it's more than 50%. I, I calculate it. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a separate sports podcasting going up on youtube guess how many assists he had though go ahead guess joshua five one (laughs) (laughs) all right well then shit uh assists assists are important guys in Uh, basketball yes this is the bronx project podcast um i don't know why i just put it off as i was gonna end the podcast yeah i'm like i am not i am not it is song of the week time Woo! Hey! Hey! Oh, it's asking for my password. Go ahead. Did you put the password in? Yeah, I got my finger. All right. In. This uh, this week's the Bronx Project podcast song of the week is well, Mirez's pick anyway is not ashamed. What? No, I'm ashamed now. Why? Because I was beatboxing. Because you were beatboxing. That was horrible. That shit was hot. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shit was hot. Your breath was hot. Nah, we're drinking the same beer. Yeah. The bitch. It's pretty cold. It's pretty cold beer. Yeah, did you? Good. Oh, you did open the beer. I was say I was like, I'll take it off your hands. No, you. I'm, I'm drinking it. It's in your hands. Yep. And not really. My phone's in my hand. Okay. So, <laughs> not ashamed. Uh, by Majid Jordan, Majid Jordan, M A. I would say Majid. Yeah, I say Majid Jordan. Yeah. Uh, M A J I D, and then Jordan, like you know, any any Jordan that you know, J O R D A N. Um, this is this is from their new album. It came out last week. It's called "The Space Between." It's an R&B album. Um, Josh made a comment made a couple episodes ago where he mentioned that I I'm a big fan of OVO. Yeah, and I, I like to a certain degree I would say yes because I'm a big fan of Division. I'm a big fan of Majid fan Jordan. Of I'm a big fan of Drake. Uh, not the hugest fan of Party Next Door. But you Not like that Toronto sound. Yeah, 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 uh, to a certain degree. 
I don't like the Toronto rap trap sound. No, but you like the Toronto Toronto R and B R and B. Toronto like R and B really sounds. does it for me. Yeah, and maybe the not weekend, even maybe not even because the weekend. I was I'm not a huge the weekend fan. I'm a I'm a the weekend fan, but not a huge fan. Because you, you know like this about the me. Weekend. You know this about me. I'm. And this is maybe another reason why I like OVO so much. Their their brand of R and B. I'm not a big fan of like. Uh, I, I give you cocaine. I put a I put a pill in your drink and shit, and then you come home with me and we, and we fuck. I don't like that kind of music too much. I don't know if that's like like a, a PC take for me. <laughs> yeah. No, I just don't. I I don't know because like I'm not that guy. Like I've never given a girl cocaine in my life. I've never put a pill in a girl's drink. I may have given girls Tylenols before, like if they got a headache. Same. But like. <laughs> By the way, that was mad corny, yo. No, I'm like better. Mad corn. Like I got Tylenol. Make a better joke. I got Steven. Tylenol extra strengths, my nigga. Mirrors. Ah, your name uh, is my so point is, degrading to Steven. <laughs> my point is, <laughs> my point is that like I, I I'm not really that kind. No, of and guy. you and I so that, both can agree that those songs that are music not... makes me uncomfortable yeah. a little, a little. It just like I can listen to it. I can like if I'm if I'm in a social event Half or past I can listen to it. You know, I can whatever. It's whatever. Uh, but yeah, I don't just listen to. Uh, I love my girl back home. I don't love her no more. I, I've done that before. I've left my girl back home, and I ain't love her no more. And she never fucking know that. She knew it. Like I, I, I made it obvious. Let me see that ass, but look at all this cash. I, that's I'm, a, I'm broke. That's a, <laughs> I'm broke. That's the weekend. Uh, what was it? Wicked Games. Bring your love, baby. I can bring your shame. Yeah. Something, bring something. Love, baby, I know. I, I, yeah. My point is, I can listen to the music. I can. I can appreciate it circumstantially. Circumcised. I'm not. That's sorry. That's the. Are you circumcised, Josh? Neither. I mean, yeah. We're we're Hispanics. We can't be. No, that's not true. I, I know mean, a lot of Hispanics. I know a lot that aren't. Have you spoken to your mom about it? Uh, she said, I didn't want them to touch you in that way. That's what she said. Uh, my mom just thought it was stupid. Like, <laughs> I swear to God. Because well, growing up, you this, hear a bunch of shit. This is, what, uh, bleh, this is what I got from it. Catholics don't circumcise their it's kids. A, it's, a, it's a Jewish thing, yeah. It's a, it's a Jewish or a newer generation kind of like... A Protestant thing. The thing is that a lot of Catholics have circumcised dicks. Like it's seen, it's seen as a, it's seen as a, a hygienic thing. Like yeah. circumcised and it's more hygienic. I also read. I also got news that actually it isn't anymore. I don't think it now is. you are prone. You're more prone to STDs now. With a you are yes. With a circumcised dick. Yes. Uh, and and everyone's like, oh, you got to dirty your dick if it's uncircumcised. Just fucking clean your shit. Just, just put that shit just put, back, just dude. Put the shit back and you fucking ever, clean you it. You ever just put your shit back and just clean? I that have shit never. Yourself? And then there's the all. I the, do it all the time. There's all the and, and obviously Josh is married, so so he doesn't count. Uh, I'm cleaning I've my never, shit right now. He's not cleaning his shit right now. <laughs> you I'm don't in know the room. that. I'm in the room. I'm promising Clean you guys. Cleaning that shit right now. I'm promising you guys that he's I'm not. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I promise you shit. that it's not that. That shit dirty as fuck it's right done. now. It's done. That shit dirty. <laughs> That's that dirty. You don't know my dick. Nah, but but for real, for real. Uh, I've never in my... And this is for, uh, for parents who... A lot of parents circumcise their kids because they're afraid of their kids being teased. Um, I've never in my life whipped my dick out and then had a girl be like, "This skin there? Nah. Never, never in my never life. In my life. Never yeah, in my that's life, true. Bro. It's not like, I've not gotten, like, I ever. I have a beautiful penis. There you go. I, <laughs> so there you go. There you go. <laughs> I, I'm allowed, I'm allowed to feel that way. You are. I'm, I'm not saying anything. That do you? I know because you don't send you don't send many dick pics, right? I mean, not to you. I mean, I'm just saying, like, like do because I've never been engaged. Do people that are engaged slash married? Do they, you guys send all, notes all to the each other? time? Oh, you, still? All yeah. All right, respect then. All right, so you still send dick pics up. I mean, not every relationship's the same, but 
mine is pretty you guys still dope. got the fire you guys still got yeah, the fire still it's I not think. like we just sit down and like watch cartoons and talk about society nah. you can do that i love that though. no we do but most of the time it's just sexual <laughs> like i don't even talk to my fiance i just fuck her i just fuck and then afterwards i just wait five minutes <laughs> <laughs> and then we're fucking again i don't know what you guys are talking about now. then i drive her ass home yeah i drive her ass home until we find our apartment and then that shit's never gonna happen again i'm gonna save so much gas money <laughs> <laughs> yeah you really are though i know because you usually like you, you drive her home and stuff right yeah of course i drive her pick her up from work as the good man i am and i take her home until I don't have to do that anymore. Yo, listen, shout out to you. I give Daphna a lot of props on this podcast. I don't give you enough props. I know, right? Fuck you. I think Daphna is much better of a person than you are. I mean, you know me for longer, so <laughs> but that I says just a just think lot. <laughs> I just think I just think Daphna's an angel and you're 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 okay. I'm all good. You're all right. I take that. I take that <laughs> a half compliment. <laughs> that a half ass fucking compliment. No, but man, you're no, I I'll give you that. You're a you're a good boyfriend, man. Oh, I give you. That. I mean, you've it's never cute. been, you've never been a good boyfriend to me. Then again, we've never been in that type of relationship yet. Why not, Josh? You never give you don't me a see chance. Nigga <laughs> said you don't. See <laughs> 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 you had your chance. You had your chance and you blew it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, we're talking about Magic Jordan. Uh. No, nah, just let me finish off, bro. I can't finish giving you props, bro. You can't even wait. Damn. You know what? I've been waiting for props. Daphna, you are, you, you you're back on top. You're half-assing me. you back on top. Fuck this nigga. You're half-assing your props me. Give me your song of the me. week. Fuck, man. Hey, are you done with yours? <laughs> oh, man. It's called, it's, called <laughs> not, it's called Not Ashamed. And it's by, <laughs> it's by Majid Jordan. That shit lit, bro. That shit... Go check that shit out. It's playing right now while I'm talking. Is it now? Because it could have played before. Play it th- throughout the whole thing. Please. All right, I got it's you. It's a long song. It's a long. You're right. You're it's right. Four minutes long. I got you. I got right. you. But uh, Josh, shout out to you for for being a good boyfriend, um, for being an example for the type of boyfriend that I one day hope to be. When when y'all stop playing games. <laughs> <laughs> when ya <laughs> what did you do that for I just poured beer on myself why did you do that cause I had a mark there and I wanted to clean it off a beer le- okay uh, it's your it's your turn I know <laughs> song I, song of the week you got me you got me off guard S-O-T-W here. there you go uh, my song of the week is Leathers by Deftones if anyone knows me I know that song if I'm, I know I, I, if I know you anyone knows me they know I'm a huge motherfucking fan of Deftones. He says as he as he sits behind a Deftones, a Deftones flag, flag, and while staring at another uh, Deftones, another Deftones flag. flag. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of Deftones. Uh, leathers. I'm what? so glad you don't call them the Deftones. No, no. If anyone does, they should just. You rot. used to, bro. You used to. I don't remember. I, I remember. I don't remember I you remembering that. Any no. You don't remember me remembering. Mm-mm. I remember me remembering. Uh, nope. I'm doing Barry it right now. Memories. I remember calling them that at all. I can't even say it you now. Ex used to say it a lot. God. Oh, she's she was a fair weather fan. A fucking what was it? <laughs> Come on, you're sick. <laughs> remember that shit? I remember you gave Why her so much shit, dude. All? If she's listening to this, it's going to be so embarrassing That's fine. I don't for her to I don't, listen to. It was care. so bad. <laughs> and we, I, Yo, I really gave her shit about it. You she did. might have started crying. But the thing is, you were such a big fan of them, too. I was also a real asshole. This is uh, Teenager Steven. Yeah, Teenager Josh not a, also. Not, not, a, not, not sweethearted Steven. She deserved that. She can't get those lyrics wrong, man. Come on. I feel like to this day, she knows the lyrics now. And you're oh. welcome. <laughs> and you're welcome. Because yeah. of anything, I corrected you. That's whatever. Yeah, anyways. Um, so, Leathers, Deftones. Giant fan of uh, Deftones. Name the album. I named my uh, album. The album is from Koino Yoken. Yes. Uh, Koino Yoken is uh, the feeling... Uh, you explain it. Yeah, no, no, you got it, man. You got it. Uh, the feeling that you're like you're about to fall in love Uh, yeah when you meet someone and it's like I could love this person it's that feeling but in English there is not a a actual word for it not at all but in 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 Japanese Japanese, it's Koino Yoken yeah it's Koino Yoken so yeah he got it right is the premonition 
of being in love with somebody yeah. that you you just see them is like I don't know what it is, but I feel like her and I or him and I are gonna have something in the yeah. future. Yeah, yeah. It's coin or yoke. You man. ever had that feeling? All the time, man. Yeah, yeah. I be having that feeling like on the train. Like you just like see I be like a random some, like girl. I be seeing some girl on the train. I'm just like I could love you. Yeah, <laughs> but would you love me? <laughs> but the thing is, Cornelio can goes both ways. Right. Yeah, it's like you know. Like we're, yeah, I know you. You yeah. know me. It's yeah. like, like you could be a random person, but for some reason, this is gonna be where we click, and for some yeah. reason in the future we're gonna fall in love, or something along those lines. And that is spelled for those of you who are like, oh shit, that sounds interesting. I want to check out the album. It's spelled K O I. That's one word. The second word is uh, N O. Yeah, N O. And then the third word is Y O K A N. Yeah, Yoken. So, Koi no Yoken. Yes, don't. Kind of like the koi fish. Koi yeah. fish named after koi no Yoken. Yeah. So uh, so check it out. Uh, check it's out. A, it's something of hard rock. Yeah, it's a. I would say it's a hard, hard alternative. It's a hardcore alternative metal rock yeah. but it's not too hardcore i would say that even people of different types of music would enjoy deftones if you wanted to get someone interested in deftones what's the song that you would have them listen to 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 start them off uh sex tape perfect uh what do you call it uh god damn it sex tape's one of them sex tape is a big one yeah i want to say entombed which is a good one. Ooh. Yes. That's another Entombed, one. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh Kim Dracula. Ooh. I wish these arms. Yeah. I wish these snakes I wish were your these arms. Snakes were your arms, yeah. Uh but uh, uh, Cherry uh, Waves is a good one. Cherry Waves is good. But uh Maine. Yeah. Maine is a good but Maine, one. But Maine is like harder. Yeah, like, but it's like, like I feel like if you're looking, like for, if you're looking for a song, if you're looking for a song to, to get casuals in, you want to look for a softer song to I would, well, the one song that gets casuals in, if you want to be that kind of guy, it would probably be Change in the House of Flies. Yeah. The song that got everybody hooked to Deftones mm. would be Change in the House of Flies. I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of play that song um, while this while we're talking about it. Play. I'm sure many of you have heard the song. Uh, I've watched a saint, a change in you. Yeah, it's like, it's like you, never you never had, had wings. wings. Now, now you, you feel, feel so, so alive, and I watched, I watched the change. change. Uh, yeah, uh, Chino Moreno, who is uh, half Mexican American, Mexican American, and uh, Irish. Yeah, he's yeah. Irish. Yeah, I did not know from that. Sacramento. His band's from Sacramento. Whenever there's a, whenever there are people of color who I look up to and they're half white, I I just wipe off their white. The white, just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's almost like with Romeo Santos, how I wipe off the Puerto Rican. Well, it wasn't half white. He was just a portion white, if anything. Yeah. And I heard that. (laughs) (laughs) And I heard that. And I'm going to pretend you never said that. He's Dominican. Because that... He's Puerto Rican also. He's the... No, but he's... He's like literally right down the middle like a fucking hot dog. This is the Bronx Project podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we'll be back next week. Please uh, rate, follow subscribe rate five stars if i see one five one four star comment i'm gonna fucking flip the shit he's gonna and follow I'm you. you i'm finding you <laughs> follow you i'm six you. two but i fall short too all right hey, you say this a lot yeah yeah i think this is like two podcasts which you did yeah, i've said it i've said it a couple times yeah. i've captioned a couple pictures <laughs> you did you just yeah. have words that you yeah. say now yeah, you know it's sometimes sometimes i'm you not my have best catchphrases but i'm saying is that i'm a tall guy but I'm not, I'm not always my best self. I fall short. This has been the Bronx this Project, is the Bronx Project podcast. podcast. I'm Mirez. And I'm Earl Gray. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace out, man.